Hello all, the Super 8 antenna. I finally got one. It looks like this. So I'll be checking it out today, comparing it to the stock Crossfire antenna, which I used last time on both radios and, and both R9 modules, of course. So before we get into it, a quick reminder to please post a comment down below, like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, click on subscribe, click on the little bell icon, and always put the toilet seat down when you finish, because most of those things really help me out. The other thing I got in, was the Free Sky T antenna, which not the Immortal T antenna, which uh, of course TBS produced, but it looks an awful lot like it. Um, that's for the receiver. Now I can't do this today because it's not so much a field swappable thing. So I'm going to be using the stock antenna on this quad, and you can see it in this uh, horizontal basic position. And I thought it'd be quite good to test out the Super 8 and the Crossfire antenna on the stock before I go ahead and put this on. Because whenever you change multiple things, you're not quite sure which one's having an effect. I appreciate it's a bit slower, but doing one thing at a time gives us a, a better comparison. So let's get on with that. If you watched my last video on this one, I mentioned that I would normally test in this first sort of dogleg field here, but this was full of people and I had to move into this sort of larger rectangular field, which actually worked out quite well for the testing as it was a slightly further distance. Of course, today they're in that rectangular field doing their site surveying or whatever, so I'm back to this sort of dogleg field where I sort of stand in the middle and I fly in front and then behind myself. Not quite such a far distance, but I guess the signal behind is much weaker. Check out the video I did originally using the stock antennas uh, on this location if you want to see what this is, looks like originally. But just to remind ourselves, this is the R9 light on the stock antennas just flying 300 meters away and you can see that we get single figure RSSI. This is RSSI on channel 16 I should mention. So things set up slightly differently today. So let's start off with the R9 light and to start with you, we're using the Crossfire stock antenna. Um, we're using 25 milliwatts with telemetry and we're using the telemetry signal to send the RSSI information over. Um, first thing here, I get a bit confused because one of my trees is missing. Yep, they cut down one of the trees I use as my turning point, which is pretty annoying. But you will notice that the RSSI stayed all the time at 99%, so this is looking pretty strong from the crossfire and kind of what we'd expect looking at how it performed in the other field. So let's go behind myself now where I would expect the signal to drop off a bit. Seeing me having some issues as well with my VTX, it, it feels like my um, one of my antennas isn't swapping in so it's always on the patch and not going so well behind. So we're coming down to the end of the field here and I'm going to dip into where I believe it's a really funny RF zone. And we go down here, sort of the lowest point, 49%. Uh, obviously, a whole lot worse on the regular antennas. Still pretty low. Um, I suppose this is the worst case scenario. Behind yourself, very low down in horrible RF. So let's do that flight again with the Super 8 antenna on board. And at the turn, it's pretty much the same, just about full signal. Uh, a little tiny dip there, but pretty much the same. As we come behind ourselves, signal looks pretty strong. As you expect, we get a little bit of fall off. And I'm dipping down to try my low RF area, and it still goes low. Not quite as low as before. The, the minimum we had was 49. This time I'm seeing about 53. So a slightly stronger signal, and we can see it recover as we come in a bit closer now. So having rebound everything, I'm now on my Trenes X9D with the R9M module with the Crossfire antenna. 25 milliwatts again with telemetry, same setup as before. And so I'm expecting this to be pretty much in line with, with what happened before. The R9M seemed to give generally a better signal than the R9M light. Uh, and it's pretty consistent flying in front of us. I'm beginning to really wish I had access to the other field now. So I just had to veer off slightly here because I can see a dog walker. I'm not going high um, on purpose. I just wanted to make sure I was as far away as I could be under the circumstances. 
Okay, so as we dip into our bad RF area, we are dropping once again to just tipping that 49 RSSI value, which is the first time I've seen the two modules perform exactly the same. So here's the R9M module with the Super 8 antenna. Once again, a good signal out in front of us. And going behind ourselves once again into our dodgy little area. We have a drop off staying just above 50 then, which is again consistent with how this works with the Super 8 on the R9 Lite. Get a slightly stronger signal behind ourselves than we're doing with Crossfire. Now I was interested to see what if that drop off was all to do with the fact I was flying behind myself. So I'm doing the same route still with the R9M and the Super 8 but I'm facing the other direction so at this point I am flying completely behind myself but the signal up this end of the field seems a lot better so it drops into the 80s but only just really so this end of the field I'm now going in front of myself and as we go into the turn now I'm not blocking at all so there's a, a drop off but it's not anywhere near what it was a, a, a bit of a little bit of either I think I couldn't replicate the fact that I was simply behind myself so I, I still believe there's some definite dodgy RFs but you know you don't do yourself any favours by flying behind yourself either quite clearly well this turned out quite good I think it's at least as good as the Crossfire stock antenna um, and you should definitely get one if you've got an R9 system because whatever that might have done to results it really went to show how bad these stock little rubber duck things are perhaps they should have given this in the R9 pack a bit like TBS did by giving this as the default antenna but yeah anyway these are certainly recommended if you've got an R9 system you could also use one of these but of course you will need an SMA to RPSMA adapter so just anything other than these stock ones because they're rubbish join me next time when we'll test it again and we'll look at the T antenna on the receiver end of things. I hope that was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.